let's go. All right, so let's talk about routing and APIs. Um, even though this is going to be purely a backend workshop, if you remember a couple of hours ago, we managed to start both front-end and back-end servers in parallel. You remember that? Yes? Good, right? So we had to manually do npm run start front-end, and then on the right-hand side, npm run start back-end. That's what we've done. But now the thing is, I mean, we always need both servers running in parallel in the long term. So do we have to manually start them? Is there any way to trigger both servers with one command? Yes. Let me present you another package. So today we installed a couple of packages already, like Express and Nodemon. Let me install a third package. So this is a very popular package for Node to run NPM tasks in parallel. The package name is npm run all. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. So thanks to npm run all, we can run multiple tasks either sequentially or like in this particular case in parallel. So let me ins install it. npm place you. So npm install npm run all. I may need to use sudo once again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then in the meantime, let me present you the syntax. If I remember correctly, so this is just about creating a new task. Uh, yeah, you see the problem? Guys, can you tell me what to do when you get this issue? Correct. As Camila suggested, if you get a problem, please delete the package log.json file and try again. This time I'll try with sudo just to prevent further issues. And now hopefully the package will be installed. So now I would like to create a new task called start, maybe start all. For now, you can call it a start if you want. I mean, up to you guys. New task. And now the syntax is something like that. npm run all. Do we want to run the servers in parallel or sequentially? And why? That's right. That's right. A server is something that is running forever unless you kill it. Yeah. So if we wait, if we wait one server to start once the other one finishes, that will never happen because servers will never finish as such. So we want to run them in parallel. How do we do that? with minus p, npm minus p, and now the name of the tasks we want to run that are start front end. It's a space separated list of tasks. So start again, and that's it. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see, right? Yes. Parallel. Yep. Yeah. You can add p or s. s means sequential, one after the other. In this case, I want to run these two tasks in parallel. So that means, in theory, I just need a single uh, terminal, right? Because I am going just to start one server. Let's see if that makes any sense. npm run start all. Is it starting the backend? That's good. The backend is there. So now, if everything is okay, boom, you see, now starting the front end. That's fantastic. So I think it will actually work. So if I check on the backend, Yes, that's the l l last message we said. And if I check the front end, yes. So fantastic. We got front end, front and back running in parallel. That will simplify our life a bit, even though in this session I don't, I won't care about the front end. I'm not going to do anything with the front end. Yeah? Let's purely focus on the back end. So let's create an API. The API I would like to build We'll look, sorry, I closed the terminal. I didn't want to close the terminal just in case there is any issue. Let me open it again. So the API I want to build is something like rest slash fruits. That's a sort of a standard. If you don't like the word rest, you can use API. That's pretty common as well. Yeah. So that's just a URL. So the URL will look something like that. HTTPS localhost 3001 because that's the backend server. So whenever I hit that URL, it will return an array of fruits. 
with the name, the price, the origin, whatever. Yeah. But also, I would like to create a second API with, for instance, Apple, and that will return details of the Apple. And likewise, I would like to create a new one with orange. Yeah. Sorry, I missed one word here. So fruits, fruits, fruits. You see the syntax? If you just point to fruits, it will give you all the fruits. However, if you have a new slash with a particular fruit name, it will give you just the details of that fruit. So that's an array. What type of data will we send here? That's right, Camila. Array of fruits will probably be an array of objects, name, price, whatever. If I want to get the details just about one object, then that will be just the object. So as part of Coldflix, you won't work with fruits. You will work with movies or TV shows, but that's the same, yeah? API fruits or REST fruits, oh, sorry. <laughs> API movies or REST movies, it will give you all the movies. However, API slash movies slash Breaking Bad will give you just the details about Breaking Bad. That's pretty much the idea. All right, so let's prepare the exercise a bit. So at the moment, we got a single root slash. That's localhost 3001. But in reality, I can add more roots, right? App.get and for instance, rest slash fruits. And now look at the syntax. The syntax is a bit special. Whenever the user asks for this data, then we will run this callback function here. We will do some stuff here. Okay. So that's the condition. If we land on this route, then pop, run this function. So what that word means? No, that's the request. That will hold all the information that the user sent like query parameters, any cookies, things like that, yeah? And what that means? Response. That's based on the request from the user, we will send a response. So let's do a test. To send a response to the user, we will type rest.send, and now some message like, welcome to the list of fruits. This is an example, yeah? So in other words, if I go to the URL, and even though probably you cannot see on the top of the screen, but if I type slash rest slash fruits, yeah, that's the message it displays. In reality, we don't want to display a piece of text. We're going to display data. So let's try, can we return an array of apple, orange, and banana? Can we do that? Why not? No, you can return whatever you want. You can return a video, you can return music, yeah? That's the point about the APIs. Here, you can send to your client, you can send to the front end whatever you want. So if I do that, I got my array. Yeah? Even though it's represented as text, but that's an array. How do we know that's an actual array? Let's pay attention to DevTools. On task number 23 and 24, you are going to struggle, probably, dealing with integration front and back end, but we'll explain tomorrow. So if you struggle and you ask for help, you won't get any help from us unless you open the tools, you went to the network tab, and then you essentially check the traffic between the front end and the back end. So here, I can clearly see the front end, my web browser, did a request to localhost 3001 REST fruits, and if I click on it, I can check many metadata, but of course, look, I can check the preview, and I hope you agree with me, that's clearly an array. Okay? So that's the data that the back end sends to the front end, and obviously it's up to the front end to do something, display it, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, that's a different story, what the front end does with the data. But that's the way we send the data. So, the list of fruits is hard 
coded here on my app.js file. You cannot see the file name. Here you go, app.js. However, let's learn how to import and export it. So if you remember, we just had a file, app.js. Let me add a new file called fruits.js. And surprisingly, so how do we export our array of fruits? Look at the syntax. In JavaScript, in the front end, you do export default. Do you remember that? Here, we cannot do that, as I told you earlier on today. The syntax is a bit different. With common.js, the syntax is module.exports equals and then whatever you want to export. So for instance, I want to export an array of data. Yeah? The idea is the same, export, import, but the syntax is different. So that's the way you export. But now, how do you import? Can anyone tell me how do I import my list of fruits based on what we learned earlier on today? Require const what? Fruits. Fruits equals what? Require. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful, remember to add the dot slash, yeah, because it's a relative part. Can I call it, instead of fruits, Brexit? Oh okay, yeah, ignoring the semantics, will that work? Yeah. yeah, of course it will work, because the thing is, the fruits.js file exports something. Whatever it exports will be saved into this variable. But obviously, as Florian said, if we want to capture a list of fruits, let's call it fruits. So now, because fruits, hopefully, is an array, I can just send it to the front end like that. Okay? So if I uh, refresh the page, it should return the same. Yeah? Same result, but now the code looks a bit better because I don't need to hard code my list of fruits anymore here. I have a file that specifically gets the list of fruits. Even though that's okay, generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend you to export an array. In JavaScript frontend, you used to export a function. I, as I will invite you to do the same thing, export a function. Because if you export a function, you can manipulate the data before you export it. For instance, you can filter it out. Yeah? As part of this process, as you can imagine, at some point, we will have to find, filter, we will have to play with JavaScript. So if we export a function, that will be much easier. So let's do that. Function, uh, get fruits, for instance. And now, let me create a variable, fruits, even though that's a bit silly, because then I just want to, for now, return it. Okay. It's the same thing, but I got a function, and then I export the variable, I export the list of fruits. So will this work? Let's try that. It doesn't. It doesn't. And if we click here, preview is empty. The backend sends no data, no response available. Why? Say it again, Camila, no one heard that. Ah, look at what Camila says. She's absolutely right, guys. Before, we exported an array, so we just returned an array. However, now, we don't export an array anymore. We export a function. So probably, we need to call the function, right? So fruits is a function. Let's call it with a parenthesis. Personally, I don't like to call it fruits. It feels a bit weird. I mean, that should work, first of all. Yes, that works. But every time I create a function, I like to rename it to get fruits, get movies, set data, whatever. Yeah, something that expl explicitly informs the user you are performing an action, get fruits. Yeah get fruits, I save a function here, and then I call it, and then it works. Any questions? Uh, if you go to the fruits.js, yes. um, how does it work when we call it uh, using fruits? Uh, I mean, fruits as a function, um, if you go in the app.js, yep. before you change to get yeah, like this. Yep. No, no, once again, once again, once again. So now fruits.js exports a function. That's the only thing we know. 
the name of the function is, unreal, is not relevant at all. That doesn't really matter. The important thing is, A, fruits.ds exports a function. So whatever we assign here will be a function. That's it. The name doesn't matter. I can call it Anita, and it will work. You see? So naming is not relevant. The important thing is the type of data. We export a function, then we import a function. And because it's a function, we have to call it. Any other questions? So should we, uh, since, it's a, since it is a function, then that's why we specified the parameter. Of course. And earlier it was not a function, which was a return. It yeah, because it's a function. If I do that, what, a, what type of data are we sending to the front end now? Array. An array? Wrong. We are sending an array of fruits. Wrong. What the fruits component exports? A function. Correct. So what is get fruits? A variable. A variable pointing to what? A function. Correct. It's just a reference in memory to a function. We cannot send that to the front end. That's something in memory. That's something weird. Yeah. That's why it returns empty because we are trying to send a function to the front end. When talking about APIs, we always refer to data, numbers, strings, booleans, arrays, objects. But a function, the reference to a function, is something that you cannot transport from the back end to the front end. So we don't want to send the function name. We want to send the data. That's why when we invoke the function with the parentheses, then we are sending to the front end whatever that function returns. Executing, executing the function, exactly, executing the function. That's why now it works. Anything else? There is more function in the first line. Yes. And you are, you are not using the same name? Yes. Yeah. yeah, once again. That will work. Yep. You want me to rename that? No, so you're saying that there's an end of the function. Ah, no, you can't. Look, look. Module.exports, you define that only once. So, what is your file exporting? That's it. Yeah? That's it. Only a function. What happened? The, the question is, is fantastic. What happened if you, in reality, if you want to export multiple functions? So what you can do, you can export an object. So you can do, you can do something like that. You export an object, and the object can have multiple properties like day 21 or 23. You know, this is an object. One of the properties can be a function. So what is, let me rename Yiyun again. Let's call it X. So what type of data X is now? Object. That's right. It's an object. It's an object. So if I want to get the list of fruits, how do I invoke the get fruits method that is part of the object x dot what get fruits, get fruits like that yeah, and there is a, a, parenthesis. a parenthesis because we want to execute the function right yeah. that's right look still works yeah so that's correct so if you you want to export multiple functions like get fruits and get g June last name what's your last name you ch -H -H <laughs> sorry i'm really bad with these things but i assume this is a uh, last name right so it's the same thing right you just call the appropriate function and then if i refresh the page you got it there and that's the way you can explore multiple things. Can I destructure, guys? What, what if I don't want to access X? Can I access get Gion last name directly here? Do you remember object destructuring? How do we do that? Get last name. Mm. 
Yeah, nice. That's right, yeah? How cool this is. So if you want to import multiple functions, actually, even if I want, how do I, how do I import both, actually, at the same time? That's right, Florin, you see? Well, I'm importing both, so I can use either one or the other. If I want to get Gius last name, like that. If I want to get, uh, sorry, where I am. If I want to get the list of fruits, I will just call get fruits, and I will show me the list of fruits. Yeah. Anything else? No. All right. So let's just exp let's just roll it back. I just want to export one function. So yeah, one function like that. Actually, no. Let me actually let me export an object. We'll see later on why I want to export an object. Cool, so that returns the list of fruits. Let's uh, change the example a bit. Actually, I changed my mind again, sorry guys. I'm trying to adapt the exercise to what I feel is more convenient. So we export a single function, but now instead of returning a list of strings, let me return a list of uh, objects like name, orange, price, uh, 1.99 origin from my town we've got the best oranges in the world guys and then let me add apple so 175 they come from Leeds and finally we got banana uh, 129 from Caracas yeah, whatever yeah. so you see now we've got a list of fruits and obviously now if I refresh it oh Good, we got an error. Fine, I did something wrong. Can anybody tell me what that error is? Get fruits is not a function. Hmm. Why? Because the way we have access to the object shouldn't. What that means? It's a. It's an array. It's an array. Look, what data, what type of data the fruits component exports? Are you pointing? No, it's not exporting an array. It's a function. It's a function. The component itself exports a function. And then, what the hell is that? We're trying to destructure a function. That doesn't make sense. We destructure, what type of data can we destructure? Array and Array and objects, but no function. It doesn't make sense to destructure a function, right? So, Let's bring it back to, let's keep the reference to the function, and then of course let's execute it afterwards. So now if I refresh, you see, it works, right? We've got the list of fruits, and if we want to get the details, if we click here, and you go to preview, so yeah, that's right, yeah, you see, you got the list of fruits, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it works, that's fine. But, but, if you remember before, I told you, yeah, that's fine, but what if in reality I don't want to return, in some cases, the list of fruits, all the fruits? What happens if I got three million fruits? It wouldn't be efficient to return them all if I just want to check the details about the apple, how much an apple is today, yeah? So let's check how to change that. Technically speaking, I can do that, right? I can create a new route and then uh, I could do, can I create a variable called fruits equals get fruits? And now fruit equals, how do we get all the details associated to the apple? Find. Find? Oh, no. get, fruits. get fruits. Again? Why? Why again? Yes, fruits. Dot, um, find. Apart from Anita, she knows that already. So, anyone else? What do we put here? This is fight, guys. This is basic first week bootcamp uh, workshop.
What do we put on the left hand side of the arrow function? Fruit. Fruit, correct. Yep, so you're giving that. That's the way you can find out the fruit object which name is Apple. Yeah, that's correct. If you are lost here, once again, please rewatch the find workshop and do find training on the Coldery platform. All right. So now, if I then just return the fruit, yeah. Um, so now, if I go to the URL and I add slash Apple, ah, you see? That's cool, right? It just returned an object with the Apple details. So that's fantastic. So now, of course, I can copy and paste that for, for instance, the orange. Yeah, and I can do the same thing for the banana. So now, if I refresh the page, I go to banana, just the banana, fantastic. And if I go to orange, I will get the oranges and the same with apples. So, you know, it works, right? Can you see any, any problem, however, with this approach? You need to replicate this many times as you have to. Correct. In reality, the structure of the code is the same, but we had to repeat it multiple times. That's not efficient. What happened if we got one million types of fruits? Are we going to add one million types of fruits here? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So let's see how can we do that dynamically. Look, back to the original endpoint. Here, you can add something else. But what? Apple? Orange? Banana? No. I don't want to explicitly refer to any particular fruit. I want to have like a wildcard, like a placeholder. You can have a placeholder like that, with colon. Um, let me call it name, for instance. You can put whatever you want. So whatever is at the end of the URL will be saved here. And that means that that root will capture the root, the name of the fruit. So now, let me copy that code. Let me remove these three roots. We don't need them anymore. And obviously, we need to do some subtle changes here, right? So that line is OK. That line is OK, but that's wrong, right? That will only work with apples. So how do I replace apple with whatever the fruit is look at the syntax request because that information is provided by the user the user decided which fruit wants to retrieve dot no not name params that's the syntax in node i want to get a parameter on the url and now dot name why name because that's what we said here if we change it to chuck then we have to type Chuck here. Yeah. Does it make sense? Let's keep it with name. All right. So now, let's see if it works. Ah, still works with the apple. Let's see if it works with the banana. Still works with the banana. Let's try with the orange. Still works with the orange. What happens if I add search for a pineapple? Yeah, it returns nothing. Because fine returns nothing. Doesn't make sense if you think about it, right? So that's a beautiful way of creating a dynamic API. However, what happened if I now want to get the list of fruits as we originally wanted? Eh? Give me all the fruits. Will it work? Let's have a look. Oh. Cannot get rest fruits. It's like, what the hell? That used to work before, if you remember, right? At some point, we managed to get all the fruits. So we broke it. Why we broke it? Because node will say, hey, the user wants to go to rest fruits. Is the first root matching that condition? No. Is the second root matching the condition? No. Because according to this syntax, we are always expected to add something else. You see? Because of the slash. So how can we tell a uh, node, hey, I may, I may give you a fruit, but that's optional. If I don't give you that parameter, bring them all. 
That's right, Anita. If you have a question mark, that means that that parameter is optional. So now if I refresh, if I refresh, uh, you see now that's unexpected. Now it doesn't work, and I don't know why. So let's figure it out. So I, I, oh yes, I know why. Look, it doesn't work. It returns nothing. Can anybody tell me why it returns nothing? Because it's empty. What's the value of request.parents.name? Guillaume? Say it again. Which one? If I, the URL is that, localhost 3001 rest fruits. That's my URL. Wrong. Look at the pattern. So rest fruits is here. So this is whatever comes next. Do we have anything on the right hand side of fruits? So what's the value of request of parents of name? Say again. Nothing. And what nothing means in JavaScript? Undefined. Yeah? So yeah, that's undefined. Do we have any fruit with name undefined? No, that's why it returns nothing. In other words, we need to change the code a bit. We need to change the code a bit. Yeah? So how do we change the code? Well, can we do if request.params.name then do that else can you finish this example guys i want to return get all the fruits what do we do here return rest slash fruits rest like that Return, get fruits, like that. It should return fruits. What do you think? All right, let's test that. Can you, it's a bit hard to see. Can you see it's loading? not returning anything you know something funny I never really understood that so you've been working with cold flicks for a few weeks right and then I mean not not you individually but something historically speaking I notice and then you start building the portfolio something I notice is many students try to reinvent the wheel try to introduce concepts or principles that you've never played with I think it's a good idea at some point to play and experiment but don't try to change everything like Suddenly, some people build the portfolio using Vue or Angular. Like, right, right? why you do that? Why I'm saying that? Look, here you learn a pattern about how to send the data from the back end to the front end. But now, that's a test alarm. You decided to change that pattern. Correct. That's not the way, guys, you send data to the front end. That's not the way you send data to the front end. To send data to the front end, you have to type that, res.send. So, res.send what? No fruits in uh, string, no, no fruits return or something like No that. fruits? Why no fruits? <laughs> because All right, uh, res fruits. Okay, so according to Anita's system, there are no fruits available, which is wrong. Because then, if I go to slash apple, I got my apple. So that message is so wrong. Display all the fruits there, yes. Yeah, of course, I want to display all the fruits. So how do we display all the fruits? Just call the fruits. Uh, the fruits, yeah, fruits. Ah, the look fruits. at what Chuck said. The variable fruits, right? That's it. So if I run it again, if I go to the list of fruits, uh, you see, that gives me the whole list of fruits. However, if I just care about the oranges, I type slash orange, and then I get the details just about the orange. 
To me, that's a beautiful API. As you can see, we declare a single route, but it's powerful enough to attend different requirements. List of routes and a single route. One more thing. Technically speaking, that's okay. However, it goes without saying that a file is going to grow a lot. Yeah? And because it's going, to grow, it's going to grow a lot, at some point it will be hard to maintain. So to me, every root should be the simpler the better. If there is any if else, like in this case, it shouldn't happen here. It shouldn't happen here. That should be part of the fruit component. This guy should have the responsibility of returning the appropriate data. And how do we do that? Well, let's refactor that a bit. In other words, the only thing I want to do here is Sorry, I want to do something like that. Of course, now I have to pass the fruit name. Request.params, params, I can do it, dot name. And that's all I want to do. So now, you see, that's it. So based on that, can you tell me what do I have to change here to keep the same behavior? So there are two points on the board challenge for the first one that gives me a decent answer. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I want to finish. I want to, to, to I, broke, I broke my code. So, um, yeah, for instance, I go to fruits orange and that gives me the list of oranges. Yeah, that's wrong, the list of fruits. Not just the orange, also the apple and the banana. That's wrong. I broke my code because I remove all the logic. So I want to add that logic back to fruits.js because I want to keep that root the simpler, the better. So what's the first thing from top? Do we need to change anything on the first line? No, no, I didn't say I didn't say you can use fine. I just want to bring the code back. Here, yeah. params. All right, that's not right. Someone else? Name. Name. That's correct. So now, um, um, Camila, you can continue until you do something wrong. So right, you got the name of the fruit. So then tell me, tell me what else do I have to do? A everyone else, please start thinking about what would you do? Because I will ask you afterwards if she fails. <coughs> so Camila has no clue. Kaini. Did you understand what do I want to do? That's the first thing. Let's ignore JavaScript. Do you know what I want to do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Same, as before. Same as before. I don't want to do anything new, right? Rest fruits, give me all the fruits. Fruits orange, give me the orange, right? So Kaini doesn't know. Who else? Jiyun. No. Octavian. All right, so uh, do you know this is just a beginner JavaScript question? So Florin? Fruits the name like that. Okay. Uh, Chuck? Um. Say it again. Like All right, so anybody else? Anita, I think you're last. Can I see the app.js file? 
Yes, of course you can see out of the yes. But the thing is that that's not relevant now. That's, you, you can ignore that file. Yeah. So we are moving the problem from routing to a, a basic beginner first week question, where we have a list of fruits and we want to return maybe one or maybe all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any clue? All right, cool, guys. You know, you know that generally speaking, generally speaking, you are more than invited to do whatever you want, right? Call flicks, training. However, I was not expecting that anybody is able to give me. I'm not telling you a perfect answer, but any approximation to this problem. Because of that, you need to urgently stop everything you are doing today. Go to codery.com go to training and then click on javascript beginner any of these free i don't really mind and then work on fine the thing is it's impossible to build something simple if you don't understand how to deal with an array and how to find an element of the array yeah? the thing is there is no point of telling you any details about routing if you don't understand that so we're going to leave it here i'm not going to tell you the answer can I try? you yeah if you want anita you can try of course return fruits of find yep What do you think? So what happened if I try to get rest fruits? Will that return the list of fruits? No, because Why? name is fruits and it's that entire thing. So what will that return? nothing okay that's fine that's fine but that's not what we want right if we go to rest fruits we want to return the whole list of fruits Should we eat fruits? where if else condition okay yeah, condition. where instruct the return Remove, okay, let's comment that for now. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah. if what? If a name is, I mean, I mean, if name is not undefined. If name is not undefined. Then return this. Return this thing. Else? Uh, return the fruits. Uh, the whole list of fruits. It should be the other way around. That's interesting. That's interesting. So why can, can you argue that, Octavian? Alright, so you want to change that, right? What do you think, guys? Ah, so that means you disagree with Octavian. So because you essentially want to bring it back as it was. So which one and why? Look. 
Say it again, Chuck. I think this is correct. You think this is correct? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying if this is right or wrong. I'm asking you, I prefer guys to you to give me a wrong answer, but be able to defend it, yeah? So you think this is correct, Chuck, why? So you've uh, passed an argument to the function. Yeah, the correct. And here you're testing whether name yep. is true or false. Name is true or false. If name is false. The name is, no, wait a minute. Name is not true or false. Name is apple, banana, and orange, right? Or nothing. Fruits dot name. So we can get rid of the, the undefined part with the. Uh, so you won't do that. Comparison of the. Ah. So if name. Yes. Whatever it gets passed through is true, return what it is, else, return the list of fruits. Do you agree with Chuck or not? So Chuck will probably get the job, right? Because he. So, uh, Look, if I got a fruit name, apple, banana, or whatever, is because I want to get that fruit name. That's why I need to find. If I don't get any fruit name, yeah. uh, get them all, right? Yeah. That's pretty natural. All right, so yeah, that's looking a bit better. I mean, one of the good things is it was impossible to look worse than it looked before, right? So any change was highly appreciated. Cool, so will this work or not? What do you think? Do you think it will work? Anybody disagree on that? No, I do. I think maybe we should. No, I think it's okay because I'm just confused whether we, get, we should use return or rest.send. No, listen. You only use rest.send on the routing level, yeah? When you want to send data to the front end. But in between of the backend functions, when you, a function calls another function, this is JavaScript, yeah? So in other words, this is just JavaScript calling JavaScript, and that's why everywhere else this looks like front-end JavaScript. That's why we use return. Else if, as well? else if. Else if, if you try to access fruits, you get the list of fruits, and else if you want to get the list of fruits, you get the No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are changing the business requirement. You are adding a new scenario. So there are only two scenarios possible. Okay. Either you want the fruit, or you want them all. That's the only okay. possible scenarios, right? So let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. So back to the back end. Now I'm fruit orange. So let's refresh. Ah. Looking good, right? And what if we pass an apple? The same thing. It works fine. And uh, what if we pass an, uh, what's the other one? A banana working and what if I pass a pineapple what will that return so pineapple will return a list of fruits All right, all right, all right, wait, 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 wait guys I, I don't want to change the algorithm I want you to understand the current algorithm yeah so, according to your criteria, if I pass pineapple, that will return all the list of fruits. Is that right? Uh, so, Kaini, yeah. Camila, I haven't heard you in a while, especially Kaini. Kaini, are you completely lost? Say again? Ah, sort of. All right. Why don't you ask any question, guys, if you are lost? Let's never understood that. I mean, pineapple is not in the list of names, so it should return the fruits. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, if we, unfortunately, I cannot have breakpoints here because this is back in code. And even though with VS Code, you can configure it to add breakpoints, this is not enabled. So, what's the value of name? Pineapple. It's pineapple. Correct. So is that condition truthy or falsy? False. Well, it's true because it's got a name. Oh, yeah. But it's not defined. It's not defined. It's not defined where? In the, in the function. And who cares? 
Okay, guys, we need to simplify things a bit. So, if I have a snippet like that, what will that display, A or B? A, why? But yeah, but Brexit is a bad thing, right? <laughs> should be false. Well, I don't like Brexit. That's no, 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 no. That should be B, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the reasoning doesn't make any sense. Of course, I will return A, as you can see at the bottom of my screen. Yeah. So that's the same thing. I mean, here, guys, are we checking whether the pineapple is part of the list? Or? No. Oh, no. No. Yeah. We are just checking if if there is a variable, if there is any value. Is pineapple any value? Yes, it is. It's just an, a string, right? Or Brexit, who cares? It's just a string, it's, it's truthy, exists. So, because it exists, we will return that. So what will that return if we pass a pineapple as the fruit? Say it again. Empty page. Why empty page, Camila? Because you don't have anything to display the return. That's right. What happens with find whenever it's unable to retrieve the desired element? What does it return? Undefined. undefined. That's correct. That's correct. Because it's undefined. If I check the pineapple, you see there is nothing. Empty. Empty. Yeah? So once again, apple works, banana works, orange works. And if I don't set a fruit, then we got them all. Why we got them all? Look, let's, let's do something, guys. We can add console logs as well, right? And then these console logs will be displayed at the bottom, even though my face is on top of it, unfortunately. So if I pass the apple, I'll show you in a second. Can you see the name is Apple? Yeah, fantastic. But if I don't do, if I don't pass anything, let's see what the value is now. You see, the name is undefined. Is undefined truthy or falsy? It's falsy. Yeah. If falsy, no. Then else return all the fruits. Does it make sense? Any questions? Tiny, any questions? Yes. I understand. You understand? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, as you can see, at the end of the day, routing is pretty simplistic, right? That's all you need to do. The complexity, sort of, it's about creating a function that filters the data based on what the user wants. So I'm essentially here covering sort of task number maybe 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you are going to deal with that. Yeah, you're going to deal with that. Anything else? It's a good question. That's a really good question, Octavian. That's a really good question, actually. What if we want to avoid an empty page because that message is a bit weird? Well, I mean, we can try to get the fruit. Yeah, try to get the fruit. And then, can we add another if else? If I got the fruit, then return it. Can we add We can add ternary, of course. Let's, add, let's do ternary in a minute. If I don't get any fruit, return. Sorry, the fruit is not available. And actually, can we tell the user which fruit is not available? Of course, we can use yeah, um, name. Can we do that, right? So now if we try again, list of fruits, fine. Apple, fine. Pineapple. Cool. So yeah, definitely, you can do that. 
And Anita was asking for the ternary operator. Can anybody please rewrite these five lines of code using the ternary operator? Uh, can you say it again? Land number eight? No, no. Oh, Kenny, I just want to change to ternary this, this highlighted code here. Return. Return. Fruit. Fruit. Question mark. Fruit in plural or in singular? Singular. Okay, what else? Colon. And the message, right? Are these two parts equivalent? Is this highlighted code equivalent to this line that Kaini suggested? I, yeah, I agree on that. And yeah, now the code looks simpler, right? Try to get the fruit. If I got it, then yes, give it to the user. Give the fruit, all the details. If I don't get, the, if I didn't get any fruit, then display an error, not an error, a message. So once again, apple works, banana works pineapple doesn't work yeah? and of course then you can move things to new lines elegance all this type of things yeah but that's that's the same anything else and about the the prams when you are doing the back end um, is that the keyword yeah yeah it is it is it is it is rig dot params that's a keyword in node yeah that's an object containing all the dynamic bits on the URL. I think it's there in front end also while doing React. Yeah, in React, that's a good point actually. In React, in React, there is something similar. So you see, when talking about routing, we got routing in the front end of React routes, slash gallery, slash images, and routing in the front, in the back end, when talking about APIs. Yeah? Still at the moment, front and back, these are completely disconnected. But in the future, probably tomorrow, we'll see how to, instead of going to the URL and then hitting enter, how to have, for instance, a button in React. So whenever we click on a button, it retrieves, retrieves the list of fruits. We could do something like that tomorrow if you want. Anything else? No? All right, so that was it, guys. Thank you.